Thursday of the 30th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? As it is written, For your sake we are being slain all the day. We are looked upon as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of the Lord. The response is, Save me, O Lord, in your mercy. Do you, O God, my Lord, deal kindly with me for your name's sake? In your generous mercy, rescue me. For I am wretched and poor, and my heart is pierced within me. Save me, O Lord, in your mercy. Help me, O Lord, my God. Save me in your mercy. And let them know that this is your hand, that you, O Lord, have done this. Save me, O Lord, in your mercy. I will speak my thanks earnestly to the Lord, and in the midst of the throng I will praise him, for he stood at the right hand of the poor man to save him from those who would condemn his soul. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Go away, leave this area because Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and I perform healings today and tomorrow, and on the third day I accomplish my purpose. Yet I must continue on my way today, tomorrow, and the following day, for it is impossible that a prophet should die outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how many times I yearned to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were unwilling. Behold, your house will be abandoned. But I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from Romans 8, 31b-39. Paul speaks about the fact that God has raised up Jesus from the dead but he didn't spare his own son from suffering. Therefore, if God is willing to pay that incredible price for us, then how could we think that he will not forgive us our sins? How can we think that our guilt is more powerful than his love? Remember, that's the sin against the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the love between the Father and the Son and their love for us. Therefore, we have to trust in that love because ultimately there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And he goes through a whole list of things that might. Angels, principalities, future things, present things, height or depth. None of these things, nothing that exists in the world 
can separate us from the love of Christ unless we turn our back on that love. That ultimately it's our choice. And therefore, when things are going well, we can be close to God, but oh, we can also be close to God when things are not going well. We can be close to God because we know we need Him. We won't make it without Him. We can be close to God when we feel very strong in our faith, but we especially have to be close to God when we feel weak because we know that we need His strength. The Gospel is from Luke 13, 31 to 35. In this passage, Jesus hears that Herod wants to kill Jesus, but Jesus says that his destiny is to go to Jerusalem. There he will meet his fate. And in fact, this is a very important theme in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus faces towards Jerusalem, and he's on a constant journey toward Jerusalem from chapter 9, verse 51 and following. This is part of his destiny. Remember, Luke is probably a Stoic, and Stoics believe that God has a plan. Jesus is trying to fulfill his plan, the plan that the Father predestined. This is why Jesus is constantly praying, so he can discern the will of the Father and fulfill it. And then Jesus has a lament over Jerusalem because he wants the people of Jerusalem to accept his message, but they're unwilling. And therefore he cries over them and says that they will not see him until they cry out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Remember that occurs on Palm Sunday, but even more it occurs in the resurrection and in the second coming. And may God bless us.